So very good evening to one and all. I welcome you all to the Collaborative Learning Cafe. And today we, th we have with us Associate Professor Vilma Maria Teresa Fernandez from the Electronics Department of St. Xavier's College to give a webinar on a very interesting topic. Welcome to the amazing world of electronics. Professor Vilma has been working at the Department of Electronics of St. Xavier's College, Mapsa, Goa, for the last 25 years. She is a very talented personality who is an alumni of St. Xavier's College and whom I had the good fortune of knowing right from her student days and then more closely as a colleague and a friend in the college. She has secured a first place in the TYBSC at St. Xavier's College, Goa, in the year 1995 and has secured the gold medal in MSc Electronics at Goa University in the year 1997. She's an MSc Electronics and is net qualified, has a postgraduate diploma in software technology, and is currently pursuing her PhD in electronics is, and is on the verge of its completion. She has been awarded the best elite Avishkar exhibitor at the All Goa Interschool Science Olympics in 2018. She has to her credit papers published, one of which is Exploring the Future of Li Fi in the International Journal of Engineering and Research and Technology. She has held various positions in college, such as head of the department of the Ele electronics department. Board of Studies member of the Goa University and the IQAC coordinator at St. Xavier's College, Mapsa, Goa. She has organized a number of summer courses in the college for the society and the community in Goa for all age groups along with her colleagues and developed software and apps too. Some of the summer courses conducted by her are PCP designing and application, fault finding in household appliances and simple house wiring, PC assembling and repairs, audio digital editing and rendering techniques using Audacity, hands-on experience on Arduino, Raspberry Pi, IoT and their applications, Train BCA in Goa on IoT and conducted practicals to demonstrate their applications. She has constructed various projects such as FM radio transmitter prototype for the St. Xavier's College transmissions on an experimental basis and a portable ECG heart monitor using Raspberry Pi. Her areas of interest are IoT, Internet of Things, AI, artificial intelligence, MI, machine learning, LIDAR, light distancing and ranging, and light technologies, learning new programming languages, developing technology for the betterment and benefit of society. So with so much of an interesting biodata and without further delay, I present to you Professor Vilma Fernandez and I leave you all to her so she can take you all to the amazing world of electronics. Over to you, Professor Vilma. You can take over now. I request all the participants to kindly mute their microphones and put off their video cameras to avoid distraction. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. Yeah. Very good evening to one and all. I'm Vilma Fernandez. First of all, I would like to thank all the members of the Collaborative Learning Cafe and special thanks to Father Mervyn D'Souza, Mr. Frederick Narona, Mr. Savio Dice, and my dear teacher, Dr. Emilia Mascarenas, for giving me this opportunity to share my views in the field of electronics through this presentation, wherein it can benefit the student community. So welcome to the amazing world of electronics. I'll present my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. So welcome to the amazing world of electronics. So my outline will be introduction, tour of the growth of electronics, advantages and disadvantages of using electronic gadgets, balancing and managing the gadget schedule, areas of specializations in electronics at the graduate level in Goa, colleges offering BSc electronics in Goa, colleges offering BE, BTech, and ME, MTech in Goa, and their respective entrance exams, areas of specializations in electronics at the postgraduate and research level in Goa, BSc and MSc electronics syllabus, applications in electronics and some of the projects which we have undertaken at St. Xavier's College, Goa, visions of some emerging electronic technologies, and finally, career opportunities. So let's begin with why electronics? So electronic devices have become a very important part in our day-to-day -day life. And we have already realized that we cannot live without electronic gadgets every day. In fact, there are giant strides which are made in the areas of communication, biomedical instrumentation, industrial automation, consumer electronics, and so on. And all these are possible only because of the great success which have been achieved in the field of electronics by various engineers, scientists, physicists, and inventors. And as early as they had begun all this as early as 1745. So electronics is nothing but the ability to control the flow of electrons in a wire. So electrons, in fact, electronics is nothing without this particular particle. In fact, this particular atomic particle known as the electron. So the discovery of the electron is actually where it begins, the birth of electronics. And it was discovered by a scientist named J.J. Thomson during his experimentation. In fact, he first discovered the cathode rays and he conceptualized them to be made up of particles which were much smaller than the atom. And he named them as electrons. So let's see the tour of the growth of electronics. Since it had begun in 1745, the first electrical capacitor was invented by the scientist Leyden Jar. In 1745, the static electricity was discovered by Ewald George von Kleist. In 1820, Andre Marie Ampere, she formulated the unit of current. And in 1826, the laws, that is the Ohm's law and the unit of resistance was developed by George Simon Ohm. In 1830, the inductors were devised by Michael Faraday. And in 1845, the laws of current and voltage and resistance of all electrical networks were formulated. By 1878, Thomas Alva Edison invented the electric lamp and the direct currents. In 1888, it uh, the polyphase alternating current systems was developed by and devised by Nikola Tesla at the frequency of 60 hertz. In 1897, the discovery of electrons by J.J. Thompson was done. In 1904, the first thermionic or rectifier valves, or as we call today, the diodes, was invented by John Fleming, but with the help of valves. In 1905, the wireless communication was developed by Nikola Tesla. In the same year, diode tubes developed by John Fleming. In one year later, that is 1906, the triode valve was invented by Lee D. Forrest, and he's also called as the father of radio. And later on, Lee D. Forrest replaced all these in the form of transistors and invented the first radio too. In 1924, the development of the electric electronic television took place. In 1946, the invention of the ENIAC, that is the electric, electronic numerical integrator and computer, and also the color TV. In 1947, the first transistor was developed by William Shockley, along with two scientists, John Bardeen and Walter Rattain. However, the term transistor was actually coined by another scientist called John Pierce. In 1950, the first bio biometric or bio uh, bioelectrical signals, that is the first cardiac pacemaker, was invented. In 1954, the first commercial silicon transistor was invented by Gordon Thiel. And in 1958, 
the first IC, as we call, that is the integrated circuit, was invented by Jack Kilby. Jack Kilby is also responsible for inventing the handheld calculator, the thermal printer, and also various comp electronic components like the resistors, capacitors, transistors, and all this, he was doing it from a single silicon crystal. And by doing this, he reduced cost and definitely had high performance from these components. In 1960, the first working laser was invented by, by Theodore Harold Maiman. And in 1961, they were able to invent the first optical fiber laser and an amplifier for it. In 1962, the LEDs were invented by Nick Halnoyk Jr. In fact, now everywhere you see, even on our phones, everywhere we have LEDs. In 1963, the first home VCR, that is a video cassette recorder, was developed and the first electronic calculator too. In 1966, fiber optic communication by Kao and Hockham. In 1968, the first liquid crystal display, that is the LCD displays, were invented. In 1969, the internet, public key, cryptography and ARPANET all these were developed. By the time it was 1970, the world's first low loss, that is optical fiber for telecommunications began. In 1971, the first microprocessor was invented by Intel, that is Intel 4004. In 1972, the first handheld scientific calculator, HP35, was developed. And in the same year, 1972, the world's first mobile intelligent robot named Shaki was developed. In 1973, the Ethernet by Robert Metcalf was devised. In 1973, the same year, mobile phone by Martin Cooper at Motorola was invented. In 1975, the digital camera and integrated optical circuits were developed. In 1976, supercomputers were developed by Seymour Cray and George Amdahl. In the same year, they had even developed the VHS format which is a world standard format for home video recordings. In 1976, the Apple One computer was developed by Wozniak and Steve Jobs. In 1979, the compact disc audio player was developed. In 1980, the international standardization of the G3 fax mill, that's the fax machines that we have nowadays, was developed. And in 1981, the first IBM personal computer was developed. In 1983, we had the first satellite TV. In 1984, we had the first CD-ROM player for PCs. And in 1985, we had the first laptop. And it was of the brand Toshiba. In 1982, we had the first large-scale fingerprint ID. In 1985, we had multiple technologies on a chip. So multiple uh, technologies like Bluetooth, many other wireless technologies were all fabricated on a single chip. In 1986, we had the fiber optic connectors. In 1987, we had the Wi-Fi precursor and the 8386 microprocessor was developed. In 1989, the commercial handheld GPS receiver, Megalon, was developed. And in 1989, the same year, we had the silicon germanium transistors. In 1990, we had the 486 microprocessor by Intel and four years later, we had the Pentium processor P5 by Intel. In the same year, Bluetooth was developed by Ericsson and in 1994, the first DVD player was developed. In 1996, we had the P2SC processor, which had a total of around 15 million transistors fabricated on the single processor. And in 2006, the PS3 gaming console was developed. In 2007, the first Apple iPhone and the iPod were launched. In 2008, the first Android OS for smartphones was also launched. In 2010, the first Apple iPad and Xbox 360 gaming console were launched. In 2011, Solar panel was considered as an alternate and renewable energy source. It was developed long back, but here they consider it as a renewable energy source. In 2011 also, the space vehicle launched by NASA landed on the Mars planet using the RTOS technology. The 2014, we had the micro scale 3D printing available. And in 2018, the Parker Solar Probe was launched by NASA. 
and in 2019, India launched Chandrayaan-2 to the moon. So let us see the advantages of using electronic gadgets. Now, many of us children, even we use a lot of electronic gadgets. So let us see first the advantages and then we shall proceed. So under the advantages we have, electronic gadgets definitely promote independent learning by providing a greater access to information because we can get all the information that we require from the internet. It also enhances communication and it also speeds up our work, like get things done easily and faster. And also teachers can educate their students in an exciting way. Uh, these gadgets also boost opportunities for collaborations wherein we can learn more and obtain more outputs. But there are disadvantages of using these electronic gadgets. That is, they can provide a lot of distraction and they can also promote cheating, that is copying during exams. A uh, lot of discipline problems are involved. Also, there is there are many a times poor concentration and focus on studies because most of the time the students uh, we spend on these gadgets, electronic gadgets. Also, lack of interest in day-to-day -day activities because we feel and we are addicted to these gadgets. So we lose interest in our day-to-day -day activities, thereby leading to very poor health, uh, no physical exercise, uh, bad eating habits. So indirectly it affects us or rather directly it affects us in our health it also can develop violent nature when we play some games which are of a violent nature also and also it since we are addicted to it we would even allow not to sleep we would not sleep but we would rather scroll through this even before going to sleep which is very harmful so we would have sleep deprivation so since we know it has a number of advantages and disadvantages it is sensible that we should balance using these gadgets and also manage their schedule. So one of the main things, if they are students and children of a smaller age, we can, uh, the parents can do this, that is parental monitoring. And since it is a benefit, we can embrace this trend and we have to embrace this trend because this trend allows us to improve our skills. It allows us also to help us in our studies and improve our performance and definitely even improve our social behavior. So. One of the ways to manage this also could be we would have a particular time called as like shut off technology time. At that time, all of us would shut off all our gadgets and we would actually speak to each other, which nowadays have become very rare. The other thing we could do is create no tech zones by saying uh, by saying about this no tech zone. It's, it stands for when we are having dinner or we are having lunch, we should not be using these gadgets so that we can concentrate on our food and with each one uh, and uh, bring a connection with each one of us. And also we have, since we know that it has benefits and disadvantages too, we should use this technology wisely. Now let us see what are the areas of specialization in electronics at the graduate level. So we have various opportunities for students who have completed their 12th standard. Like for example, uh, you can do your BSc in electronics if you have your 12th, 12th science, if you have done your diploma, also you can do your uh, BS in electronics, but you will get a s admission to the second year and even vocational electronics can pursue their BS in electronics. Then under the engineering streams, we have BE in electronics and communications. Here the students have to answer the exam. That is a 12th science along with this GSET entrance exam. You can also get admissions to B electronics and instrumentation with your 12th science and GSET. Similarly, with for BE electrical and electronics and B tech in electronics and communication. But the B tech in electronics and communication, you have to clear your 12th science along with the entrance exam, that is JEE mains. Now, some of the colleges which are offering BSc electronics in Goa are St. Xavier's College, Mapsa Goa and Dhyan Prasarak Mandal's College and Research Center, Asagao Goa. Goa University, Goa offers MSc in electronics and also PhD in electronics. So the students who wish to enroll themselves for BE or BTech and then further their studies in ME or MTech, they have to answer particular entrance exams. And some of the colleges which offer BE and BTech as well as ME and MTech our National Institute of Technology, that is in Ponda, South Goa. For that, you have to clear your 
entrance exam in JEE mains. Also, we have IIT Goa, that is Indian Institute of Technology Goa, that is placed in Ponda. For this also, you have to pass your 12th and answer the JEE main. We have another institute called as Billa Institute of Technology and Science, that is BITS Pilani, that is in Vasco. For that, you have to clear an entrance exam, BITSAT. And the rest of the colleges, that is the colleges which I will be mentioning now, you have to just clear, after your 12th standard, clear the GSET exam with a valid score. So those are Goa College of Engineering, Ponda, Agnel Institute of Technology and Design, Mapsa, Padre Kosesa College of Engineering, Verna, Sri Raieshwar Institute of Engineering and Information Technology, Shiroda, Don Bosco College of Engineering, Fatorda. Some of the areas of specialization in electronics, that is to pursue your studies in postgraduate at the postgraduate level, we have MSc in electronics, we have ME in electronics, and M Tech in electronics. And some of the areas of specialization after your master's degree in electronics research is PhD in electronics, as well as PhD in electronics engineering. Now, let us see, uh, since it, this college is uh, where I am teaching, so I can clearly tell you what all is happening in our college. We have BSc Electronics at the graduate level at St. Xavier's College. The Department of Electronics has three full-fledged, well-equipped laboratories with online UPS support and internet connectivity so that we can conduct all our hardware and software practicals easily. The FY and SY Computer science syllabus for BSc Electronics. Our BSc Electronics is powered by two more departments, that is computer science and physics. So the portion what is taught in within these three years in FY and SY computer science, we have programming fundamentals using C, data structures, database management systems, and computer networks. And we are also powered by this particular department, the physics department, for the students of BSc Electronics, and that is mathematical methods and mechanics and electric circuit theory, heat and thermal dynamics and properties of matter and acoustics. These are covered in the first year. And in the second year, we have waves and oscillations and electronics, optics and modern physics. And the skill based again offered by these two departments for the BSc Electronics students are programming in Python, web application development using flask this is done by the this is offered by the computer science department we have electrical and electronic instrumentation and documentation and visualization using latex this particular uh, software latex is used for writing technical papers so it's a very useful paper and even to write mathematical formulas this is provided by the department of physics now the subjects which the students as they are progressing through all the three years this is the syllabus for them for the first year and second year. They have network analysis and analog electronics, linear and digital integrated circuits, electronic communications, microprocessors and microcontrollers. And each of these subjects that they, they have taken, they would have a practical component to them. Some of the core papers which are offered at TYBSC Electronics are embedded systems, that is MSP430. It's a programming language used to program embedded systems. Then we have computer networks and administration. This particular paper teaches us about all the various computer networks, that is the OSI layer, the TCP IP protocols, and so on. And also under administration, the topic which is taught to the students is Windows Server 2012 R2 version. So these are some of the benefits of studying these uh, papers. We have biomedical instrumentation where we teach students about how to use or take the readings of an ECG, that is an electrocardiograph, EMG, electromyograph, EEG, electroencephalograph, and even oximeter readings, and how to get those readings. Then we also have a blood pressure meter. We can measure blood pressure readings. Uh, we also have glucometer and so on. So, and the students are also taught how to take images of MRI scans, CT scans, and so on. In the next paper, we have operating system where we teach all the three. That is, we teach operating system used for PCs and laptops. We teach the operating system which is used for 
Android devices, or we also have the operating system used for embedded systems. We also have the operating system which is used for real-time operations, like the Mars Pathfinder, which was sent to Mars, planet Mars. So we teach them all the three operating systems and how it works. Uh, we have power electronics, which deals with the electronics handling high powers used in industries. We also have transducers and instrumentations where we take in values, we convert one form of energy and we translate this into another form of energy and we make sure that we get the readings and measurements of, from these instruments. And finally, one paper which is compulsory is the project paper. And some of the skill-based and discipline-specific papers which are offered at BSc level, so all this, all whatever we have mentioned till now are all going on as the students progress with these three years. So that we have a well-defined curriculum so that the students immediately even after finishing their BSc are job ready and they are skill trained after their graduation. So some of the skill-based papers are industrial automation, PLC and SCADA. It is very useful in places like uh, Zuari Agro where we have a lot of industrial plants over there and we need to, we, there are certain places we cannot reach over there because of uh, certain technical issues. Then the person can sit at one place and he can control the entire plant. So we have industrial automation. It's also used in rigs. So it's a very important component. Then we have smartphone app development where we teach students to develop apps using Android. We have MATLAB programming language, Python programming language, photonics, which is a study of uh, light, and we have C++. Some of the activities of the department that we have, we have been doing and ongoing are certificate courses in Arduino and Raspberry Pi, programming, PCB designing, etc. Whatever ma'am has said, we have conducted these programming courses, uh, certificate courses. We also have, we have also had annual national, international conferences, symposiums in very large scale integration, that is VLSI and embedded systems. Uh, we promote innovative project ideas. We have had a few industrial field trips and study trips. We also conduct a number of seminars and workshops. And also we, we conduct pre-BOS workshops so that we can upgrade our BSc electronic syllabus as per the needs of the society or needs of the academic fields as such. So we need relevant topics to be uh, upgraded. Then we have, uh, we also have, our department also offers consultancy in the field of biomedical instrumentation. Here we provide services like we can, we can record your ECG, your EMG, blood pressure, uh, glucometer, that we can measure your glucose levels and so on, uh, respiration rate, heart rate, pulse rate, and so on. So, and also in the field of embedded systems and industrial automation, like system designing, uh, use of equipments, we give them some programming skills if anybody comes for consultancy and also training. The PhD completed in our college are by two of our colleagues, that is development of novel soft core architecture for total hemoglobin estimation. In fact, in short, it means it's a non-invasive hemoglobin meter. It is done by Dr. Kaji Francis Pinto. We also have another one that is study of physiological parameters of the human body for variability. That is case study of the heart by Dr. Noel Gervasio Tavares. And some of the PhDs completed by our eminent young scientists at the Goa University are in the fields of biomedical instrumentation, wherein they have made non-invasive meters to measure glucose in our blood without extracting the blood. They are measuring this using non-invasive methods to measure glucose, cholesterol, hemoglobin, urea, and so on. They have also developed a blood pressure measurement electronic meter, which uses both auscultation and oscillometric methods. And both these methods, wherever there are defects in one of the methods, they complement each, me each of the methods so that you get the best out of the two within this single blood pressure measurement meter. Also, some of them have done on the fetal heartbeat measuring system so that any defects can be detected right at birth itself. In agroelectronics, they have done a lot of research in plant or tree infestations, quality nut segregations, quality of food products, and so on. They've also worked, number of the, a number of our researchers have worked on embedded systems and soft core processors and advanced communications. Now at the master's level, that's after you have completed your BSc level, 
you have to answer the GUART for the Goa University to get admitted into the MSc Electronics program. And the syllabus for the MSc Electronics is microelectronics and very large scale integration design, that is VLSI design, advanced digital communication systems, numerical computation and algorithms, embedded system design and internet of things, that is IoT, optical communication systems, operating systems, and real-time operating systems, that is RTOS. They also have the following courses, that is data science and machine learning, signals and systems, digital signal processing, instrumentation and control theory, laser system engineering, digital system design using HDL, and EDA, tools. So the student has to, in order to complete their MSc, they have to complete a total of two years, wherein all these subjects will be taught to them. Now, let us see some of the applications in electronics and some of the projects undertaken at St. Xavier's College, Goa. The first one is uh, we had done an FM radio, uh, wherein we had made a FM radio prototype, which was made with two cascaded stage amplifiers, and we were able to transmit the signal from our college to somewhere around the outskirts of Panjim. And we tested it by playing some pre-recorded music from our college, and we were able to receive it on our car's FM radio. We had also used an old TV antenna, which serves the served the purpose for it. So that was uh, the one which was giving us a signal. And since we were at a very higher we had a high range, uh, high uh, altitude where our college is placed. Uh, the antenna placed there also gave us a good coverage. Then we had done some of uh, some apps such as a college app. This was developed by or designed by our students using Android Studio to make report generation work for teachers easier through this app. It also allowed parents and students to access their academic reports. For example, uh, like the timetables, notices, all this was made available just on a click of a button. And the attendance of the students could also be viewed by the parents immediately. So various functions and facilities were also added to this particular app. Then we had the smart glasses for security, also called as augmented reality. Here we had used a lot of uh, softwares like Python, PyCharm, and we used a hardware Arduino Nano for processing. So as we know, our college has lots of students enrolled per year. So we needed the security to keep a check on which students enter the college and so on based on their ID cards. So sometimes even old batch students used to come with their ID cards. So, so what we did is, so as to identify the students of our college and also of those students currently studying in FY, SY and TY, what we did is, uh, and so to ensure that individuals from other, other than our students could be identified, we created a database of all the students' details. In fact, uh, what we did is uh, students during admission time submit their photos. So we collected these photos and this was our database. So now whenever we had to meet any students we, uh, or we see them with the ID cards, we just had to scan their photos which are on the ID cards and it could directly identify and tell us whether this student is of this current year or not. So it was a, and it was, a, it was uh, visible on the glasses of the person, uh, glasses of the security guard who's using. It would just come over there, identified or not identified. If it is identified, we knew that the message would be coming on his glasses, which would say identified. Then we would know that this particular person is from our college and studying, currently studying in this year. But uh, if it was not identified, that means this person has just won an ID card from earlier years and uh, he's trying to get in. So the next one which we did was a portable ECG meter. Now this particular thing was quite useful because it was used to record the ECG of patients who actually cannot afford to take ECGs. Like for example, when they are sick, uh, some poor workers and all, they cannot afford to take ECG because it costs them maybe around 500 bucks or maybe even more than that. So what we did is we used Raspberry Pi as a processing unit and we used a software called as Audacity, which is actually used for music uh, editing and so on. But we made sure that uh, we used over here, we used Audacity to pick up the signals from customized. We made these silver, we bought silver uh, coins like, and we made silver electrodes out of them because they're very good conductors. And with the help of this, we were able to record the images onto that Audacity software on the PC. And later on, 
the images would come as ecg waveforms perfect ecg waveforms later we could send that we could take a print of that ecg waveform which we had got or we would just send the file to the doctor regarding this patient so the doctor could uh, uh, use this file for diagnosis so it was one of the cheapest way so it was hardly costing say if you just take a xerox or take a print maximum from 1 to 10 rupees it would cost so it was much easier so the workers could also go in for uh, taking their ecg and find out what is a problem what is the problem at an earlier stage and at a uh, cost effective uh, manner next we had a gesture control wheelchair using raspberry pi again this we had done for uh, people who are specially able like people who are paralyzed or who couldn't use their feet and so on so people who were paralyzed and who could not use their feet we could uh, attach this um, uh, we had used something called as accelerometer this would uh, tell us the position where the person is currently or where he uh, what he wants to do like for example if he cannot use his limbs uh, legs then he could use his arms or he could use his fingers or we could even if he could not use the lower part from the neck onwards we could use his head section so here what we do is we connect this accelerometer with the help of a band attached to the patient and then uh, by just moving their head left right the vehicle also the wheelchair would move left right and the direction how the uh, the patient wants so hence the patient could move about without much assistance then we had this uh, campus assistant robot uh, self automated vehicle here this robot would move around the campus and help students navigate through the college by informing especially when uh, new students come first year students come then informing the students where the respective buildings are positioned and exactly where they are positioned using the gps so it would help the students to know where to move how to navigate throughout the campus and we would store all this information in the database and would help students know where they are currently and how to navigate to the to their respective destination then we made use of something called as a robot camera for security this was like an intruder security wherein the wifi the cameras they would detect motion near the doors or the windows of your house and record or click photos of the intruder who is trying to enter your house and through the internet we were able to send the images of that intruder to the owner for immediate action or maybe even alert an alarm then we had something called as the parking assist using biometric security so here the parking places in our buildings are limited so in order to restrict outsiders from parking their vehicles in the premises this system would authenticate only the building members to park their vehicles through fingerprint security so by doing this we allowed only if you authenticate through your fingerprint security or biometric signal it will allow them to park their vehicles in their premises or for that matter even provide entry to get into through their uh, gate of that particular building then we had uh, the 2d printer we had constructed this this we have constructed with scrap material from old computers like small motors spindles and so on so here what we would do is the image of what we want to draw using the 2d printer would be stored on the pc and then we would be able to send the signals from the pc to the printer to print it using a simple pen so we had actually just put a normal pen and but the signals were transmitted from the pc to the 2d printer and it would print exactly the same image what was there on the computer then we had uh, we did the next one that is uh, this again was for specially able people we tried to do something with regards to braille speech to text blind stick using wifi so first i'll talk about the braille speech to text here in this uh, project what we did is we developed a software which uh, was to help the blind people so it would recognize braille characters and once it recognized the braille characters it would convert it into text and this text was further converted into speech so that the blind people can read uh, can listen to that uh, to the speech and similarly if the blind person wants to write anything back as text then we would convert that speech of that person into text and further even convert that text into braille so even the blind person could read whatever he has just spoken so this was with regards to the braille speech to text next we had the blind stick which was devised or designed using arduino as the processing unit to which we had connected various sensors so that the blind could navigate through rooms 
or through areas easily through with the help of the blind stick because the blind stick would have many alarms and alerts so that the blind person would be able to navigate easily we also had uh, the home automation and security surveillance using iot here uh, many times we realize that we travel to destinations far away from our homes or we work at places far away from our workplace so in order to keep a check on your house this system was devised and it worked as a surveillance device and here also we used raspberry pi and signals which are captured from the house were directly sent to the owner through wifi and it was also able to save or scare in fact it was uh, purposely it was also connected since we use a term home automation it was purposely connected uh, or to scare the uh, intruders by putting certain lights on and off or maybe even some stereo system turn on, turned on or some other home appliances turned on just to give indication to the intruders that someone is at home actually no one was at home but just to scare them then uh, we also devised something called as the attendance based system using fingerprints so this is a very useful system wherein um, the time of the teacher for taking attendance usually uh, was saved that is the students when they enter the class itself they would just place their finger on the device as they enter and the data would get stored and recorded from the device to the college server for for that particular lecture that particular time and that particular day then we had the uh, real time helmet monitoring using deep learning here our students have done a project which was very useful to catch and identify riders who don't wear helmets so uh, this was done uh, in in real time and as soon as the uh, the camera recorded anybody without the helmet a rider without a helmet their number plate of that bike was immediately recorded by the webcam which are installed on certain street poles and it was sent immediately to the police control room to issue a chalan for these helmetless riders the accuracy was quite good it was around 97% the next one that we have is uh, the we had was the smart helmet here this helmet served multi purpose safety mechanisms like for example if the rider is drunk and he has not worn a helmet then definitely the bike would not start so he has to first wear his helmet and next security level was check whether he is drunk so if the first one only he has not worn the helmet the bike will not start and obviously if he is drunk then it, even worse then it would definitely not start so also if an accident had taken place then uh, the helmet would due to the impact of that helmet hitting on a surface hard surface it would trigger an sms to the emergency services notifying the gps position of where the accident site has is or where the site uh, where the accident has taken place and it would give information directly to the police and to the ambulance next we have also done projects on a face recognition system for security and attendance system so this project could recognize faces in crowds of people or who were missing people who were missing or lost or people who were searched for by the police etc and they were detected and recognized through this system also a single video captured by the software could take attendance like for example again uh, we use the same uh, logic for taking attendance what we did is since it is working as a surveillance camera we just remove one panoramic photo of the class we could uh, identify each and every student sitting in the class and definitely record them onto our college attendance servers then we had a, a project on plc based automatic bottle filling here with the help of programmable plc stands for programmable logic controllers so this is where we use it in industries so with the help of programmable logic controllers the filling of bottles at the correct level correct amount timing and precision using various sensors over the conveyor belts was automated like how we have in the industry so the students actually did this project and we always promote students working on projects on internet of things deep learning artificial intelligence and machine learning so some of the visions of emerging electronics include uh, bioelectrics bioelectronics which is nothing but it is a branch of science concerned with the application of biological materials and processes in electronics or the use of electronic devices in living systems for example cardiac pacemaker it's an example of bioelectronics there are many of them we also have something called as nanoelectronics so these are some of the emerging electronic technologies 
and some of them have really done a lot of good work in these areas and there are still chance for more better work to be done in these areas we have nanoelectronics here we have uh, the, this term is used in the field of nanotechnology for electronic components and research on improvement of electronics such as the their display size their power consumptions the size of those devices because each of these uh, nano electronics deals with uh, devices having size of in nano nanometers so it's a very very small size so here they have this also includes research on memory chips to make it as small as possible but to store more data and also surface physical modifications on the electronic devices such that we can make it smaller we can make it efficient and power eff power effective too then we have artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning actually these are all related to each other but they are all different the first one that is artificial intelligence it is the intelligence demonstrated by machines as opposed to natural intelligence which is displayed by humans or intelligent beings but machine learning is also a type of artificial intelligence that allows software applications to become more accurate at predicting the outcomes without being explicitly programmed to do so we also have what is called as deep learning and this is nothing but a type of machine learning which can accurately or it's based on artificial neural networks in which multiple layers of processing are used so that we can extract progressively higher level features from the data so you can get more specific details and more uh, accurate details from the data that you have captured then we have smart and autonomous systems here the smart and autonomous programs focuses on intelligent physical systems that are capable of robust long term autonomy which requires minimal or no human operator intervention so everything works on its own that's why they use the term autonomous so they can they can even operate in the face of uncertainty uh, unanticipated and dynamically changing situations so it knows what to do at the right time then we have a uh, cyber security in this area it's also called as computer securities some of them also call it as information technology security it is nothing but the protection of computer systems and networks from information disclosure theft or damage to their hardware software or any electronic data and also from disruption or misdirection of services that they provide so this is very very important because now we have uh, our phones cell phones and various other gadgets and we require this security a lot nowadays then we have 5g this is in telecommunication it is the fifth generation technology standard for broadband cellular networks in which cellular companies have already begun deploying it worldwide and it is the planned successor to 4g networks which provides connectivity to all our cell phones so now even the 6th 6g is coming up we have quantum computing this technology exploits phenomena of nature that becomes uh, readily apparent at the scale of atoms so here we try to perform calculations or computations at the scale of atoms it is an area of study focused on the development of computer based technologies which are centered around the principles of quantum theory so that we can perform these calculations even much more faster we also have uh, the next area that is uh, robotics so in robotics we have what we uh, there is nothing but it's a interdisciplinary branch of technology and engineering which involves design uh, construction and operation for the use of these robots in fact the goal of robotics is to design machines that can help and assist humans uh, we also have cognitive science this is an interdisciplinary scientific study of the mind and it processes with input from linguistics psychology neuroscience philosophy artificial intelligence computer science and anthropology here what they do is it examines the nature and the tasks and the functions of cognition means of our brain and the goal of cognitive science is to understand the representation and processes in our minds that underwrite these capacities they also help us to acquire i means how these signals are acquired and how they are developed and also how they are implemented in these underlying hardware in the field of education we have live streaming remote teaching etc uh, now during the 
covid times we have realized that uh, the internet helped, uh, this uh, the electronic te technologies helped us a lot to conduct our classes the students didn't have to come to college and we didn't have even have to go to college to teach uh, practically we went actually but uh, uh, all these things was possible because of uh, because of the electronic technology so we were able to do remote teaching live streaming and also sometimes in the field of education we can use games and simulations to explain our concepts much more clearer with technology and make it fun for studying too then we have printed electronics this is a set of printing methods which are used to create electrical devices on various substrates so it could be on your fabrics on your clothes and so on so printing typically uses common printing equipment suitable for defining patterns on materials such as screen printing flexography gravure offset lithography inkjet etc so examples are the electronic circuits displays sensors radio frequency ids that is rf ids which are uh, tagged on to our t-shirts when we buy a new one so we have these things so it is based on organic conducting and semiconducting materials then we have data mining so data mining is a process of extracting and discovering patterns on larger data sets which involves methods at the intersection of machine learning statistics and also database systems so it works in collaboration with all these three fields in this there are two types of data mining like you have predictive data mining analysis and we have descriptive data mining analysis in fact the goal for this data mining and discovery is to identify and classify data to make determining the threat the affected resources requiring protection and even the fallout of potential data leaks more manageable with regards to big data extremely we usually find that there are some extremely large data sets but these data sets have to be analyzed computationally in order to reveal certain patterns or maybe trends and associations especially relating to human behavior and interactions in fact this process is already going on as we scroll through or we browse through our internet it's already taking place this data is already collected so goal of this big data is since big data refers to data sets that are too large or complex to be dealt with by traditional data processing applications we use this software wherein data with many fields offer greater statistical power with while data with high complexity may lead to higher false discovery rate next we have uh, the internet of things that is iot so as we know iot that is internet of things describes physical objects with sensors processing they have processing ability the devices can talk to each other like uh, you can have like for example we have the alexa which is a voice assist this is an example of iot in fact consumer iot so we have uh, these particular devices which can communicate with each other via their sensors they have very good processing ability and they have a lot of technology so that we can the devices can connect to each other using different technologies and also exchange their data with these devices and systems and it can be done even over the internet or through other communication networks like for example under the consumer iot we have alexa voice assist under the uh, under the concepts of uh, in uh, consumer uh, iot's we also have home appliances and uh, light fixtures lights which are connected which can communicate to, we can communicate to the lights and tell them to turn on and turn off and so on then there are various other things like commercial iot which takes care of healthcare and transport you have military iot which takes care of surveillance type of robots we have uh, industrial iot which takes care of one of the examples could be agricultural monitoring and we have infrastructure iot's which deals with uh, smart cities so the next one that we have is uh, biometrics now in biometrics it is also a branch of study uh, science which deals with uh, body measurements and calculations related to human characteristics so biometric authentication is definitely used as a form of identification and access control so it is used as a security measure it is also used to identify biometric authentication and also so uh, it is used in individuals for surveillance and some of the areas where they have already used these are fingerprint iris scan facial recognition voice tone typing patterns mouse movements on your computer or even your internet usage now under the digital scent 
technology. This is also an engineering discipline dealing with olfactory representation, that is smell. It is a technology to sense, transmit, and receive scent-enabled digital media. The sensing part of this technology works by using olfactometers and electronic noses. So uh, the electronic nose is nothing but it is a device used to check whether the food is spoiled or there is some chemical weapons in the uh, substance, whatever is provided to you, or even can uh, smell out or detect cancers. So an electronic nose is an electronic sensing device intended to detect odors or flavors. It is also the term, the term in fact, electronic sensing refers to the capability of repro reproducing human senses using electronic sensor arrays and pattern recognition systems. So the different uh, pattern recognitions are already stored in the database and they would compare it like how we would normally smell things. Then we have the e-textiles, that is the uh, electronic textiles. These are fabrics that enable electronic components such as batteries, lights, sensors, uh, maybe even microcontrollers to be embedded in them. Uh, we use this for fashion or for style, that time we can use e-textiles. But there are other things also called as smart textiles. These are fabrics that have been developed with technology and they provide added value. That means they give you much more better, give you extra features and benefits. So we can use them as signages. You can wear it on yourself and when you're riding a vehicle or a bike or something, it can show you the directions you're turning left, you're turning right and so on. Uh, they can also, these particular uh, smart uh, textiles can also enable to sense and react to environment conditions and external stimuli due to their various sensors which are already embedded or incorporated into them. Then we have uh, flexible electronics. These are foldable type of electronics like a flexible and foldable. Like for example, we have the smartphones which can be folded. We have solar cells which are very huge in size which we have to deploy. We can fold them and take them. So they come under this uh, technology that is flexible electronics. So they can be used for, so solar cells can be used for launching and uh, deployment. The, these type of circuits that is flexible electronics are also called as flex circuits. And it is a technology for assembling electronic circuits by mounting these electronic circuits onto devices such as flexible plastic substrates. So flex circuits can be screen printed. That is the circuit for them on uh, screen silver circuits on polyester material and uh, many of them have already uh, begun using this in cameras mobiles calculators exercise monitors and some industrial and medical devices then we have something which is called as memristor these are uh, a very small fast low power analog electronic devices which can be programmed separately they have various signal processes already on to their boards they have neural networks, control systems, and they can be used as reconfigurable computer systems where we can, if you want it to use for another application, you can just reprogram it and use the same device. They are also used for brain computer interfaces, RFID and pattern recognitions. Then we have the molecular electronics. This is the study and application of molecular building blocks for the fabrication of electronic components. It is an interdisciplinary area that spans physics, chemistry, and material science. So all of them collaborate together. But the unifying or the feature, unifying feature of this is to use molecular building blocks in order to fabricate these electronic components. So the goal of molecular electronics is to use molecules as the working components, like electronic components. For example, it'll act like a wire. They can act as diodes, transistors, logic and memory elements, and so on. And they can be miniaturized, thereby they would use less power and they could be also used as an alternative to solid state semiconductor technology. Then you have the nano electromechanical systems. They are also called as NEMS. Okay? So they are a class of devices which are used for, which integrates electrical and mechanical functionalities at the nano scale. And they consist of very small or miniaturized electrical and mechanical apparatus such as small actuators, beams, sensors, pumps, resonators, and motors. And their scale is below one micron, that is one micrometer, and it is having a range of one to 100 nanometers. So they're very small in size and definitely power efficient. Then we have what is called as the solid state transformer. This is a power electronic transformer. 
or electronic power transformer and it is used to convert ac to ac conversion normally but it is a type of electronic converter that replaces our conventional transformers which are used for ac electric power distribution which were more bulkier in size and this particular solid state transformer has just three main primary parts that is it has one converter to produce high frequency ac from the input line frequency it has an isolation by a high frequency transformer called as an hft it has a converter to produce the ac with line frequency from the ac high frequency so here if you see as compared to the conventional transformers this has a very high switching rate then we have something which is called as spintronics this is the it is the use of fundamental degree of freedom of electrons called spin and uh, earlier our conventional electronics we were using electrons and we began with we had begun with that to perform information processing it acts as a storage device that is temporary storage of data in random access memory and so on but now with the help of spintronics we are using the spin of an electron the electron has got two spins plus half and minus half and with the help of the spin of the electron they are using this now again to perform information processing and temporary storage of data so now the the speed and the rate at which data will be stored and the data uh, will be processed will be much faster then you have another field which is called as twistronics it's actually twist and electronics so it is a study of how the angle between the layers that is uh, any 2d material that you have if you just twist that material it can change the electrical properties of that material that is it can convert from a non conductive material into a super conductive material just based upon the sensitivity of that angle twisting between the layers and this is uh, they use the material called as bilayer graphene in this which uh, helps them to uh, have electrical properties ranging from non conductive to super conductive then we have uh, what is called as lidar this is this stands for light detection and ranging uh, it's a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulse laser and uh, also to measure uh, ranges to the earth it is used for making autonomous vehicles that is you put cameras all about the vehicle and it can uh, autonomously uh, navigate so it is very good for elderly people they just have to put their uh, location from where they have started and to where they want to go the gps uh, will track that full path for them the route for it and then uh, once the route is uh, detected uh, it will be stored in the database so in case of uh, uh, in case there is no um, coverage suddenly at a particular area no issues as a backup it is already saved as soon before they be, uh, have begun their journey or uh, before they the vehicle moves and uh, even the traffic on the road because of the help of those cameras all around the vehicle it can detect if anybody is crossing the road anybody is running across the road and so on so it can be used as a perfect uh, autonomous vehicle it is in agriculture also it is very useful uh, lidar is useful in agriculture to give them a 3d map just by uh, clicking particular Uh, camera shots they can come to know the full topography and the terrain of that particular area and it's also used specially for finding uh, in uh, maybe in a river or any land to find out specially in river and such areas to find out the pollution levels in these uh, sections and finally lifi uh, this is a, a bidirectional wireless system which makes use of light and it transmits data via led or maybe infrared light and uh, this is a slight replacement to wifi because wifi has already has a crunch on its spectrum so we cannot extend it more so lifi can uh, complement uh, wifi to uh, increase this uh, uh, spectrum allocation issues now the various fields uh, where uh, research is still going on in very uh, large extent is in agriculture aerospace optoelectronics medical military robotics as well as transport uh, some of the career option opportunities that we have like most of our students they are when they graduate from our department they either pursue their further studies or they are placed in well known companies all over the world so uh, some of the career opportunities and where our students are already placed are in embedded system developers they have got positions as embedded system developers automation and industrial engineers hardware engineers system administrators network infrastructure engineers software solution designers software app developers computer programmers uh, definitely like people like me lecturers and researchers so uh, 
these are some of the opportunities where our students have uh, got positions but uh, i would say that in spite of doing uh, uh, obtaining all your certificates and all your degrees academic degrees that you have obtained it is very very important that a child or a student should obtain online certifications the reason is uh, everybody now does bsc everybody does b everybody does me uh, msc and so on now if you want to have an edge over the others during an interview it is very important that you try to first find out what the company wants which are the areas of specialization and before you even apply for the post try to get your online certifications in those particular courses so you have an edge over the other uh, contenders for the post so uh, thank you for your patient listening so any questions um, sabhi will take over now well uh, i don't see uh, many questions here so uh, the platform is now open anybody is having any questions you can directly uh, put it in the chat box or you can unmute yourselves and uh, interact with professor velma thank you uh when it comes to practical learning of electronics uh, i would say better to take a btech course or a be course but more uh, skill based it is btech if you take a course in btech it will allow you to uh, have a more uh, greater exposure in uh, practical component okay uh, what is the state of electronics industry in goa okay uh, in uh, goa we don't have so many but we have some at verna like persistence uh, there are some of the companies but uh, many of them i have seen uh, small small startups so right now in goa we don't have much of an exposure but in bangalore pune lots of uh, companies are coming up and uh, more opportunities in such places okay and somebody has asked uh, share applications of electronics in drones yeah here uh, yeah here in uh, drones uh, that we use uh, right now there is a license on them so we can't just uh, use the drones earlier we used to use it for weddings and things like that so right now there's a lot of market even for capturing a full view of uh, weddings and things like that there are since we can capture it from such a height and good resolution it can be used for a lot of research uh, type of uh, Uh, investigations and also uh, they use this drone technology in a military that is uh, they make small small uh, uh, swarm of those drones and uh, they actually survey the place and to find out whether anybody has crossed the line of control uh, or cross the borders and so on so uh, the application of electronics in military is uh, using drones is very very useful and they use something called as the swarm technology okay sir uh, what is the lowest cost for possibly for building a low power fm transmitter would the same be legally accepted see uh, since it is an fm transmitter it is a line of sight so if you don't use a very powerful transmitter within particular distance like 100 meters 200 meters easily you can construct it in 100 rupees itself so it's uh, very cheap Uh, and you can you don't have to use a very high stage uh, amplifier because if you try to make it very powerful legally it is not acceptable you should have a license you can obtain an amateur license if you want where uh, they will give you a particular they will allot you a particular frequency and with that frequency and you have the license you can use it but since we are an educational institute 
we are allowed to construct these type of circuits uh, for uh, prototypes or experimental basis. But uh, legally, you cannot uh, just construct one FM transmitter and start transmitting because it is not legal. But you can construct it for your purpose, like 100 meter distance, 200 meter distance. You want to communicate, then you can make them with low power uh, and the maximum cost would be say around uh, 100 to 200 rupees. That's it. Well, I don't uh, see any more questions coming up. So uh, can we? Yeah, you, you can. Up? Yeah, you can take over. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, um, I'm very grateful to you, Professor Vilma, for accepting our invitation to impart your valuable knowledge. More so because of your very busy schedule of trying to perform your college duties while at the same time trying to complete your PhD research work along with writing of papers and not to say uh, the other responsibilities in college and home. Thank you very much, Vilma, for this. Your talk was excellent. You have very meticulously listed out the why students should study electronics, what are the different subjects or which are the different parts of the electronics that they are going to learn the topics in electronics then also you have the, and highlighted the different types of projects and the prospects and what that are there the new areas of research and the opportunities which can still be done okay then so i'm sure the participants will benefit from your uh, web, from your webinar and you have motivated them Thank you very much and wishing you all the very best for the completion of your PhD work. Hope we see you again on our CLC platform with more interesting findings. God bless you and God bless all the participants. Good night to all. Thank you all. Thank you one and all. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. God bless you all.